what the right to food means and why it's important to have a strong right to food in any national legislation and how that empowers both governments and people. So the right to food at its most basic uh, sense is the right to be free from hunger, but it's also much more than that. I think the right to food is the right for everyone to celebrate life uh, through their meals with each other in communion. And to use the language actually of the Scottish Good Food Nation, uh, the Good Food Bill, food is a point of people's pride and pleasure. I think that resonates with a lot of people in a particular way. In more specific terms, the right to food means that the, uh, food must be three things. It must be adequate, it must be available, and it must be accessible. And so by adequate, food must be adequate. It means that people must decide for themselves what is appropriate food based on their own uh, ecosystems, based on their own culture, based on their own uh, daily life. So the idea of adequacy is to empower people to choose what type of food is good food for themselves. Food must be available, means that there must be a reliable source of food. Um, um, and that can be in a bunch of different ways. We feed ourselves through various means. So food, mean, uh, a reliable source means, it can mean feeding oneself from the land, from the seas, from the rivers. Um, so this has to do with land use policy, with hunting rights, fishing rights. Uh, reliable sources of food means there must be uh, stable markets. People get their food from markets and from shops. Um, and a reliable source of food means our food workers need to be healthy and safe. And I think in COVID, we've seen that the big disruption has been primarily um, through labor and through uh, uh, worker safety. We've seen in places like uh, meat packing plants across the world, when workers aren't safe, we don't have a reliable source of food. If they're not safe, we don't eat. So food must be adequate, it must be available. And the third point is food must be accessible. And the way I think of accessibility is to think of a kitchen. Uh, that's how we, get, that's, the, that's the point of where we prepare our food. We must have access to kitchens, which can mean a focus on where people get their food. It could be hospitals, schools, nursing homes, prisons. It means having the time and resources to cook at home for ourselves and for our families. Um, and it means that people uh, need physical access to kitchens and to the tools that they need to eat. Um, so I've already touched a little bit on COVID-19 and I think what COVID-19 has highlighted is, is the importance again of food workers. Um, that's been the big disruption. But it's also highlighted how important it is for governments to have, national governments and local governments to have the power to respond to change. So COVID-19 is just, is just the beginning. It's, it's, it's sort of a, a warning shot of what lies ahead in light of climate change. And we've seen what, uh, is what's important is flexibility and where communities have been able to respond quickly to food disruptions it's been really at the local level. It's been through uh, national and local institutions having the power to respond. And it's across all sectors. So food is not just about agriculture, it's labor markets, it's education, it's land use. Um, and at the heart of it, it's about power. People need the power to hold their governments accountable and governments need the power to respond where there's been failure in the food system, it's been in situations where power is concentrated in the hands of the few, whether it's in, the, in, in corporations, um, whether it's supermarkets having too much power, or whether it's governments are not democratic or accountable and therefore not responsive to people's needs. Um, the right to food is different than other approaches of doing food policy and uh, it's different than charity and it's different than food security because the right to food at the heart of the right to food is dignity and accountability. So if it's a charity model, people are at the mercy of those uh, at the benevolence of others. They're at the mercy of those with power. They're at the mercy of how people are going to dictate whether and when they receive food. And often, more often than not, the charity model loses uh, the element of dignity. And food security only focuses on the issue of, of access and availability. It's a, it's, so food security often becomes an issue where technicians, scientists, uh, policymakers, they decide what the right policy is. What gets lost is accountability. Um, 
Whereas the right to food means that the government has a duty to ensure people have uh, adequate and access and available food and people have the power to hold their governments accountable. That's what makes the right to food different than charity or just food security in a narrow term. The other element of why a right to food approach is important is I've seen uh, from my experience and from my research that if a country doesn't have a robust right to food in legislation, they've been run over by international markets. So I'm aware that international trade may not be within the devolved powers of the Scottish government, but if the Scottish government doesn't have that strong right to food in legislation, empowering itself and the people, then it's harder for any government, local governments, national governments, or what have you, to have the ability to, to coordinate and push back against markets. A right to food allows governments and people to shape markets and make markets serve the people and not the other way around. Up until now, international trade has been dictating food policy, which has meant that profits um, and commerce has been defining uh, food policy as opposed to people's everyday needs. Thank you.